coming. Head coach Sean Lewis will start us off with an opening statement. Hey, you know, obviously a, a tough loss, but going back and looking at the tape and everything, the kids played extremely hard. Um, the game had a lot of, a little bit of everything. I mean, especially what you expect in a rivalry game from beautiful sunny day, rainbows, snow flurries, wind gusts, um, exceptional play on both sides. Kids fought like crazy. Obviously, wish we would have made a few more plays, wish we would have put the kids in a few better positions. Um, but kids really, really pleased with their effort. Um, Justin Rankin's play at the end of regulation is one of the most unbelievable football plays I've ever seen. That kid has tremendous heart. And there's plays like that across the board. Um, and, and like I said, at the end of the game, you know, the, the, the field goal team, the operation team, I know it's gotten a lot of attention. Those kids have done a fabulous job all year. It's not just on them. And, and you know, they'll continue to be great for us down the stretch here. Um, and, and we'll continue to fight. We'll continue to learn from, from these lessons that we get week in and week out. And I know that we'll be better for it in the end. How much sleep do you get Saturday night? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. What were the, I mean, there's obvious ones, but what were the things that kind of kept you up? Maybe it wouldn't have. The obvious, you know what I'm um, you know, just thinking through all the different things that we could have done maybe differently throughout the course of the week or just double checking and cross checking to where, you know, you're seeing kids making plays left and right and, and just where could we have made just one more play so it wouldn't have gotten down to just that, that last situation, you know, so the game doesn't go to overtime. How could we have managed situations just a little bit different so that you could give those seniors the, the opportunity to, to have their wagon wheel and get it back in their locker room. So more just kind of going through and, and, and cross referencing, referencing like our process and what we do throughout the course of the week so that we're gaining the results that we want at the end of the week because it's not just a culmination of what happens on that day, but it's what happens throughout the course of the week and making sure that we are on top of our business, you know, Sunday through through Friday so that when Saturday arrives, you know, we're where we want to be and we get the outcomes that we've earned. It's your second game uh, where you guys only lost by a point. Yeah. You kind of learn in that process. <laughs> Let's find a way to score one more point than the other guys, you know. Um, but uh, again, it's just kind of different situations to where how could we have handled some, some things differently, you know, because you can second guess kind of hey, do you go for two there at the end, right? Or, hey, should we have kicked the field goal at the end of the first half? Well, we kicked the field goal at the end of the first half, then you're not in that situation. So you can go, you, you can drive yourself crazy going back and forth with all those different things. But I kind of just go back and I look at, okay, where are the things where fundamentally where we can be better so that consistently we're playing the way that we played at the end of the first half to where even though we go for it on fourth down, the defense responds in a great way and they get a turnover right away. And then the offense get, comes right back out and they go down and score. And then the way that we start the second half to where, again, all three phases are feeding off of each other to where we, we start with a great kickoff, the defense gets a stop, the offense comes out, we sustain a drive, we go down and we score. So what are the things that we're doing in those moments and how does it show up throughout the course of the week so that that's who we consistently become and it's not just flashes of that greatness uh, in those moments so we can sustain that success and, and be consistently good and not just occasionally great in those moments. If I would have pinpointed it by now, we would have broken through. But you know, there's the kids are doing a great job, and and, and they're continuing to give all of themselves to us, and, and the staff is continuing to give all of themselves to to them. And again, it, it's something that with time, trust, and love, and experience, we'll we'll push through. And, and these kids are learning what it takes day in and day out. You know, we talked a lot about ever since we've been here, the demands, the expectations, what we're asking them to do is significantly different than what they had been asked to do. And, and they are seeing and they're understanding that when they do things the right way, that the benefits of doing it that way. So we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to work hard, and we'll continue to become a more disciplined team. We'll continue to be a, a team that's you know physical at the point of attack, and in those moments of truth that we come out on the right side of things. But I was proud of the way that you know we've been stressing for a very long time ball security and the turnovers and the factors that you know limit victories because you're killing yourself so you can give yourself the chance to win. We only had six penalties, and, and you know a couple of those. Uh, uh, again, I, I'll take that the, they're fine, you know, and there's things that we can control in that regard. We didn't turn the ball over one time, and we're putting ourselves in a position to be successful because of that. So they're hearing the message. They're doing what we're asking them to do. They're fighting. They're playing with the right kind of effort. And, and again, we'll continue to, to persevere. We'll continue to fight. I'm st Irish. I'm stubborn, so I'm not going to stop. And, and we're going to continue to stay on our course with the way that we go. There was kind of times uh, last week when you guys played at Miami mm -hmm. that you seemed a little bit flat. Mm -hmm. This week I was on the sidelines for the fourth quarter. It seemed a little bit different. <laughs> what did you... I, well, you know, being back home, you know, it obviously plays a big part of it. And, and and need to give a shout out to all the fans and everyone that stayed through that crazy day of weather to where we have sunshine, we have rainbows, we have snow, we have wind. And to have that energy at home and to feed off that from the fans is huge. And it's a great thing about our stadium. It's a great thing about our fans that support us in Flash Fast Nation. They're there and our kids feed off that. I, 
uh, obviously it being a rivalry game, it being senior day, and, and having some alumni back for Hall of Fame weekend and things like that. The kids were excited to play at home, and, and they were very, very energetic because of that. You know, and, and now we need to over the next nine days here, as we get on the road and we get ready for Mac action play. We got to go and do something that we haven't done yet this year. And I challenged the kids yesterday that we need to go on the road in Mac play and have that same energy. And it doesn't matter if you know there's there's five people in the stands or, or fifty thousand people in the stands, or we're playing on a Saturday or a Tuesday. We get the opportunity to go play regardless of weather, regardless of venue. If you love this game, you're going to show up and play, and you're going to have great energy about it. So I'm looking forward to watching our team do that in BG you know, up here in you know in what eight days now. Um, when you take over the program, obviously you got to. See things happen before you can really judge. Okay, so you're four games into the Mac, two of them are one point games against two of the better teams. Mm -hmm. How do you feel just now that you can see what you've got a little bit more talent wise? How do you feel about where you're at and where you need to, to get? Yeah, I mean, when we are focused, when we're locked in, our kids would come with energy and they're doing things the way that we ask them to do it in the manner in which we ask them to do it, then we can compete with anyone, anytime, anywhere, and we've shown that. Now we've got to learn to finish when we do those things. But, you know, a lot of people have made a lot of comments about, you know, once you get your kids in, once you get your recruiting classes in, I think that's a bologna cheese. You know, these are our kids, and, and I took this job, and I love these kids, and we're going to pour everything in. I told the seniors when we first showed up that I don't believe in rebuilding and that it's their senior year this is for a lot of them for a lot of those young men that were honored you know this past weekend that these next four games are going to be their last four games their last four opportunities to play football ever in their lives and it would be unfair and unjust to them to walk in here and say okay hey you know seniors this is a rebuild year and we're going to scrap things and, and they have given all of themselves to us and we're going to do that each and every single year and with the talent that we have and the talent that we will accum uh, to continue to accumulate we'll be just fine and we'll be in every single competitive ball game because of the work that our kids put in the positions that our coaches put them in and when we're again when we're operating in all three phases together we can go toe to toe with anyone who kind of jumped out to you just like since you've looked at the tape a little bit yeah, I mean, obviously Rankin, you know, he's a guy that I talked about his one play, but I mean, across the board, he did a fabulous job, you know, of running the football, you know, obviously the, the touchdown catch in overtime as well, the way that he aggressively pursued the goal line as soon as he had that ball in his hands, you know, it, it was fabulous. You, you see him and his demeanor and his heart on that play, and you see other kids in that frame that that don't want any part of touching him because of the, the way that he is attacking the end zone and he explodes through the back of the end zone the way that we coach him to. It's it's fabulous. Um, you know, Cepeda Phillips is a guy the past two weeks that he's really kind of jumped on the scene and, and, and he got an opportunity and we talk about how when preparation meets opportunity, good things are going to happen and he's quietly gone about his business and, and he's had a role on special teams where he's consistently showed up and, and he got some time to play defensively a few weeks ago when it was 31 nothing. And again, it didn't matter circumstance for him. He got out on the field. He has infectious, genuine energy that you can feel, and he loves playing the game, and he made plays from sideline to sideline. And again, that showed up, you know, this past weekend. Um, you know, Khalil Morris continues to be dominant up front um, and has done a really, really good job. Um, pleased with some of the young guys and the way that they're coming along as well. Um, and, and then Julian Sams is a young man, speaking of the young guys, that, you know, he had been playing interior guard for us, and um, through some injuries and different things that have happened up front, he kicked out to left tackle and, and did a fabulous job. You know, didn't even bat an eye with it and then put in a little extra time in preparation and, and did a really good job against two quality defensive ends um, this past weekend. You mentioned Phillips. Um, he started in place of, of Matt, is that correct? Yeah, yes, sir. That, uh, what exactly is the situation there moving forward? Uh, it was just a matter of, of again, we, we put a big emphasis on if you can – demonstrate excellence that your role and your responsibilities will increase and, and, and in that Miami of Ohio game he demonstrated some excellence of his position so we gave him an opportunity and, and again he's done a great job with that so they'll continue, continue to be you know competition at that spot and I think competition is best for everyone across the board our kids know that each and every single day we're going to demand and ask them to continue to get better and better their best and Cepeda's continue to do that and competition brings the best out of everyone and if everyone continues to get better on a daily basis and individually we keep getting better the pack as a whole will We'll continue to grow stronger and then that way the whole family is better and we go out and we have depth at positions of need and as we continue to play this game as we go down the stretch that that's not a negative and we got a lot of good players that can play in a lot of different spots and a lot of different roles what'd you think of uh, Woody's performance over 
Uh, he, he was good. There was some, again, uh, kind of his performance as a whole was very indicative to the family's performance, right? To where at times there's there's moments of brilliance and moments of greatness, and still at times there's just a lack of focus, a lack of attention to detail with some of you know his fundamentals, most importantly, because when he's right, his feet are right, and he's in rhythm like the ball that he threw to Mike Kerrigan in the one-minute situation at the end of the first half. I mean, it's as beautiful and as pure as a ball that you're going to see him throw, right? And then there's other times where you know he just gets mixed up in his reads a little bit, and, and and, and his footwork gets a little bit lax. And it, again, it, we talk about this constantly with him. And he'll continue to grow. But you know, he's still, for him, that was his eighth game a, as a starter. And he's learning, again, to, to continue how to play fast and to do the things that we want him to do. And again, it's not like he's fighting me in any sort of the way with that. He's doing a great job with it. You know, it's just like driving a car. The more you get behind the wheel when you get your learner's permit and then your driver's license, you know, the first time we all got on the highway to go 75, 80, 90 miles per hour, not a whole lot of us were very, very comfortable with that. You know, and he's getting a level of comfort with playing at pace and doing things the way in which we want him to do that. What are a few things that you've noticed that he's improved on since he first started? Well, I mean, so just his overall urgency yeah. of, of, of doing things, you know, he's at first, when he first got here in the spring, you know, he was a little bit too casual. You know, he kind of didn't understand the, the pace of which we wanted to play. He thought he was playing fast, but he wasn't. You know, so his his overall urgency of play has been really good. You know, and, and again, I, I'm a professionalist when it comes to all our guys on the team. So, you know, one misread is too many. So don't get this twisted that he's got a bunch of misreads, you know. So it's just those controllables to know where our eyes are supposed to be, to know what our footwork and our fundamentals are supposed to be across the board. He's gotten significantly better with that. And it's just continuing to grow and improve upon that. Yeah, obviously, from the outside and looking at this moving forward, um, a, a huge challenge to come off of that game and, and continue forward. Mm -hmm. Just kind of talk, I mean, you've kind of addressed that a little bit, but just talk about that in particular. Yeah, you know, it, it, it is. And I think from the outside looking in that you would think that, okay, hey, everyone invested so much emotionally in this game and obviously against a rival in a game in which you want and to lose it in such a way that it's going to take a lot out of you. But that's why we have the 24-hour rule week in and week out so that regardless of who the opponent is, if you follow that process and you, that's part of your daily habits, you'll be able to clear it a little bit easier. Um, and, and again, it, it's – it's easy to do things when things are easy and things are right, right? And, and, and right now we're sitting at the record that we have. It's not where we want to be, but we're going to get to see a great test of who we are as a family and what sort of resolve that we have. And, and our kids did a great job coming back yesterday. Everyone was on time to everything. Guys were locked in. They were attentive. And for us to clear what happened on Saturday, we need to have a good Sunday, and we did. And now we have an extra, a few extra days of rest, so we need to do a great job with treatment so that our bodies can be as healthy as they can be so that physically, mentally, emotionally, we're, we're, we're where we need to be when we take that field against BG. And again, that's a day-by-day -day process that we'll continue to work through with our guys. And there's no doubt in my mind that they'll come back out on Wednesday when we get back out on the field. There'll be energy. There'll be life because we get to go play. And the best way to remedy what we're feeling or what we felt on Saturday is to go out and play again and to get the taste out of our mouth. Um, Derek, um, obviously you played this first game. Well, yep. you know the register rule is different. Um, is it still, is there still a possibility he could get the year back? Or how does that he, if he plays in less than four, he'll be able to get the year back, yep. Has that ever been a consideration? If I can go now and adapt and use it. Yeah, I mean, it, so it's always been just, hey, when you're healthy, you're going to go. And like we've talked about, just didn't want to rush that. He was healthy. He was right. He knocked the rust off, and then boom, some kicks the way that we know that he's capable of doing. The coverage unit did a great job getting down to field those kicks as well. So, you know, we'll address those conversations when they come up and everything, and that's going to be, you know, a personal conversation between him and I. But was pleased that he's back healthy, pleased that he's back up and ready to go. And obviously, it, it's, a, it's a major impact to that phase of the game to where we're able to flip the field. Anytime you've got a kid who's kicking at 77, 72 yards, that makes a tremendous impact on the game. Good. I mean, aside from, again, just some general soreness, um, you know, a, a couple ankle sprains, shouldn't be anything too major, especially with the extra days of rest as we get going here for match and play. Uh, he's again. He, he's got a little ankle deal that's going on. That what he was he was taking care of that going into the Miami of Ohio week. Kind of got rolled up in the Miami of Ohio game. Kind of reaggravated, put him back to zero, and um, you know wasn't quite able to get to where he needed to be to get back out on the field to protect himself and to be at his best. So we'll he's closer today than he was yesterday, and we'll continue to get him where he needs to be to be able to compete. Um, then just looking ahead, obviously this is an interesting matchup for you personally. Yeah, you know. It, 
Yep, yep. Know quite a few of these guys on the roster and watching the tape and everything. Um, so it'd be good to see some of those kids again. It'd be good to go, you know, back there and see some familiar faces and everything. But uh, I'm on a different sideline now. I'm wearing different colors, and, and I care more about this family than any other. Yeah, I, I mean, whatever it is that they're going on, that's got going on in their camp is, is kind of, you know, outside of my control. And the biggest thing that I'm concerned about is making sure that our team is emotionally, physically, and mentally ready to play, not because it's BG, but because that's kind of the, the, the challenge I think that all of us head coaches face with this match and play. Everyone kind of makes a big deal about, you know, the way it adjusts your schedule and different things like that. But that really, you know, a, a Wednesday becomes a Tuesday and a Friday becomes a Thursday and so on and so forth. So that becomes easy. What, what becomes kind of the challenge of the day is that when you're sitting in the hotel, you know, the way that we will be on Tuesday and you're not playing until 8 o'clock at night and you're not watching college football all day the way you would be on a Saturday of a, of a primetime game. So just making sure that we got our kids in the right headspace and that when they take the field, regardless of who it is, whether it be BG this week or, you know, Buffalo the following week and so on and so forth, that just they're emotionally, mentally, and physically ready to go for that moment. And again, if you love the game, that should be easy, but it's my job to make sure that we're ready to roll and that we have the energy so that we can play this game the right way and we respect the process leading up to that opportunity. Yeah, they can. They got some weapons. I mean, they got some dynamic kids that, um, you know, when they get the ball in their hand because of their speed, they can score from anywhere on the field. So, you know, we got to do a great job. You know, obviously with our base fundamentals, we got to be great with our eyes and we got to be great tacklers and get those kids down to the ground when, when they're in the open field. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.